Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam and this video is about salivary glands ultrasound. Here we have a longitudinal view and a transverse view of a normal parotid gland. The parotid gland is hyperechoic and has a homogeneous echo texture. We can see a smooth echo texture of the gland. This is the normal submandibular gland. It can be isoechoic or hypoechoic to adjacent structures. It also has a homogeneous echo texture. These hypoechoic structures are the mylohyoid and hyoglossus muscles. And on the right side, we have the normal sublingual glands. We can see both of them in this image as it is a transverse view. They can be isoechoic or hypoechoic to adjacent structures. Most of the pathologies involve the parotid and submandibular glands. In this image, we can see a normal parotid duct. It has a small diameter. Sialolithiasis refers to presence of stones within the salivary gland ducts. We can see a hyperechoic stone within the parotid duct, which has led to a dilated parotid duct. The stone is also casting a posterior acoustic shadow. Stones are a common cause of dilated parotid duct. Here is a case of a stone within a submandibular gland duct. We can see the hyperechoic stone with posterior acoustic shadowing. Sial adenitis is the inflammation of salivary glands. In this image, the submandibular gland is affected. We can see an enlarged heterogeneous submandibular gland. The left image shows a normal color flow pattern in submandibular gland. We only find few Doppler signals, whereas in the case of sialadenitis, we see hypervascularity within the gland. We find more Doppler signals within the gland. In a parotid gland abscess, we will find hyperechoic and heterogeneous areas along with some hyperechoic areas. We will not see any internal flow on color Doppler. No color flow will be seen inside the abscess. Parotitis is the inflammation of parotid gland. It occurs in cases such as mumps, an enlarged parotid gland is seen with hypoechoic and heterogeneous areas. We find an overall hypoechoic parotid gland, whereas the normal parotid gland is hyperechoic. Sjogren's syndrome is an autoimmune disorder that affects the salivary glands. This also leads to enlarged salivary glands. In this image, we can see an enlarged parotid gland. Hypoechoic and heterogeneous areas are also seen. Here is another image of Sjogren's syndrome. We see 
many hypoechoic nodules within an enlarged parotid gland. Usually, the number of nodules increases over time. We may also find hyperechoic areas within the gland. These are usually due to fat deposition within the affected gland. Now, we move on to salivary gland tumors. Parotid pleomorphic adenoma is the most common salivary gland tumor. We will find a well-defined hypoechoic mass with posterior acoustic enhancement. In some cases, this adenoma may also have multiple lobules. These are the chambers that are seen. This mass has multiple lobules or chambers along with posterior acoustic enhancement. The mass will be hypervascular on color Doppler. Many Doppler signals will be found within the mass. Warthen tumor is the second most common salivary gland tumor. The appearances overlap with a pleomorphic adenoma, but one distinguishing feature is that it contains sponge-like anechoic lesions, but other features are similar to pleomorphic adenoma, such as a well-defined hyperechoic mass with posterior enhancement. A Wharton tumor is also hypervascular on color Doppler. It will contain numerous Doppler signals. Malignancy in the parotid gland has various appearances, but it usually contains hypoechoic lesions, which are somewhat irregular in shape. Here is a case of lymphoma which has affected the parotid gland. We see a hypoechoic mass with mixed cystic and solid components. Benign lymphoepithelial lesions are usually seen in HIV positive patients. The parotid gland will contain complex cysts with thick septations and internal echoes. These are the septations, these bright walls within the complex cyst. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more imaging videos.